This broadcast is brought to you courtesy of Amateur Radio Station VK7AX in Alveston, North West Tasmania. From Queensland, this is VK4WIA and the weekly Q News Amateur Radio News Service. The text edition is available by contacting Q News at wia.org.au. This is Alan, VK4 HIT, with news from Ipswich and District Radio Club. From Ipswich Wyson, the Pinnacles Classic was held on the 16th of June, and Greg, VK4 GJW, and Mark, VK4 SMA, were on the base. Checkpoint 1 was staffed by Rod, VK4 ACF, and Alan, VK4 AJG. About 86 runners started the event, and from a communication standpoint, everything went well. The Guzzler Ultra Marathon is held over two days on July 20 and 21 and Mark VK4 SMA said he now has enough operators to run the Guzzler event. With the quota of operators filled, if you do have time to help, please put your name on the reserve list via ipswichwison at gmail.com. The Lake Manchester Trail is coming up on August 18 and the Mount Glorious Trail November 10. The club's IRLP repeater is now up and running, with many thanks to Rob, VK4AB, and Alec, VK4AZ. It has been tested locally and overseas, with 59 reports on both transmission and receiving. Club membership remains strong, with four new members joining in May. A warm welcome to David, VK4HDW, Bill, VK4-2WML, Diane, VK4DI, and Bill, VK4ZD. New members and visitors are always welcome at the clubhouse for our monthly social and business meetings. Check the website for dates and times. Reporting from Ipswich, this is Alan, VK4, Hotel India Tango. Redcliffe Club car boot sale and Whamuran repeater relocation project. Greetings from the Redcliffe and District Radio Club, VK4RC. Robert Thompson, VK4TFN here. The Redcliffe Club will hold our annual car boot sale on Saturday the 24th of August 2024 at our clubhouse at McFarlane Park, Kipper Ring in the city of Redcliffe. As always, vendors in at 7, breakfast is at 8, the car boot sale starts at 9 and the raffle is at 10.30. $10 per car boot or table and a gold coin admission. For Go to www redcliffradioclub.org.au for more information. Repeater Relocation Project Following the closure of our Whamuran repeater site, the club's 2 metre and 70 centimetre repeaters on 146 925 MHz and 438 325 MHz respectively have recently been relocated to a temporary site. Unfortunately, it is expected that the coverage will not be good in the short term. The repeaters had occupied the Whamuran site for close on 30 years, but it was time to move on. We at the Redcliffe Club extend our apologies for any resulting inconvenience. It is anticipated that the Moreton Bay Regional Council will soon approve our application for a much improved site at Ocean View. We will get the repeaters up and fully operational at the new site as soon as possible. The Redcliffe Club's 2 metre Mount Glorious repeater on 147 MHz is still fully operational. Thank you for your patience and 73s from the Redcliffe and Districts Radio Club VK4RC. Hello, I'm Jeff Emery VK4ZPP and I've been thinking. We're fortunate to be enjoying the playfulness of the shortwave bands when the sunspot cycle is at maximum. Radio conditions can be both frustrating when old Sol manages to eject a shower over the earth, or they can be exhilarating when the sunspots create the conditions for worldwide contacts with minimal power. We've been seeing the other side of the earthly behaviour with large parts of the northern hemisphere suffering terrible heat waves. In the southern hemisphere, we've just breathed the metaphorical sigh of relief as the cyclone season passed most of us by without great drama. However, in this past week, we have seen the countries of the Caribbean savaged by a very unseasonal early Category 5 typhoon, or cyclone as we Antipodeans call them. Parts of Italy and Switzerland have been deluged with also fatal results. Whether we accept the theory of climate change, 
or not is irrelevant to the situation, that weather patterns are varying and becoming more intense in the effects. Although we're not hearing or reading a lot about the various emergency and stormwatch nets that are conducted in different IARU zones, we should all take care to ensure that we do not operate on the frequencies designated for such traffic around the world. These days we can play on the internet and ferret out the necessary information, but in years gone by we had a compendium of useful facts contained in our call book. There's been interest shown in reviving this very useful tool and the ease with which appropriate amateur radio information can be retrieved from such a publication should not be overlooked. Familiarity with various band plans may come from frequent operations where the knowledge imprints itself, but for many who meander around the bands on an occasional basis, ready access to the necessary facts is a great operating boon. In many ways it can be argued that in recent years there has been a wrestling of supports to the amateur fraternity. Oh, should I add the word sorority to that as well? The ACMA has decided to ditch certain features which many consider necessary, such as the database of call signs and their holders. And I don't believe we can buy a copy of the regs, but must have access to the net, a computer and printer if we want a hard copy. Don't even ask about having a printed license document these days, as this has been put in the bathwater with the baby and discarded. Fortunately, there is a petition submitted to the Parliament seeking to remedy this oversight. Some have suggested that the call book material should be made available in a digital form. The experience shows that the least easy way to pirate is still the hard copy, the printed book. And if a book is to be compiled, there are the necessary copyright requirements to be met. And just like the government, the item needs to meet a minimum cost recovery standard. I'm Jeff Emery, and that's what I think. How about you? From Queensland, this has been VK4WIA and the weekly Q News Amateur Radio News Service. We thank our rebroadcast team and you for listening. And remember, internet text of this news is available by dropping a note to Q News at wia.org.au.